Hey guys, I'm Jay and welcome to my to-do list. Uh, today I'm working on my, my laser here. My rotary machine actually broke. So it's uh, what allows you to put on cylindrical items and turn it. So I thought it'd be a good idea to go ahead and show you guys how to set up the perimeters on this. I'll show you what I'm dealing with. Well, lucky for me, I bought a cheap crappy rotary tool that I'm going to go ahead and set up in my machine here. Uh, my cheap crappy laser. Uh, and I got a brand new one down here and I already have it hooked up. Take a look. So I'm running into the issue with the brand new laser, or brand new rotary tool. Uh, we do a lot of um, rolling pins around here. So what happens is we were doing this rolling pin, and we noticed during the engraving, it broke, and we just got this here. So it basically went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth right here until the engraving was completely done because, well, the machine stopped turning this this way. Okay, we also had an issue right in here where it didn't connect the, uh, the piece all the way around. So I'm gonna show you how to dial this in to get your brand new rotary tool. To, to work properly. So I already, uh, um, let's show you that stuff right now. The new rotary tool plugged in. If you guys need to know how to, do it, to plug it in and hook it all up, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video on that. If not, we're good. I'll just show you how to, uh, to, to set the perimeters on this. So we wanna make sure that we are running this perfectly uh, parallel with this axis here. So to make sure that the laser goes across this perfectly. So what I like to do is I measure from, from here to the bottom of our um, the foot here, which should be perfectly parallel with the rollers, all the way to the front of the machine on this corner and this corner to get the uh, the same measurements. So now we have the same measurements. I've already done this step here because I just is after thought to make a video of this, but we already have the same measurements here and here. So I know that this is sitting perfectly parallel with this. It's really nice if you have the item that you're working with. Uh, we have we do hundreds and hundreds of rolling pins and. Uh, I just happen to have this one that it got ruined on. So we have a nice little spot here. We can go ahead and do tests to get this thing dialed in on something I'm throwing in the trash anyhow. So uh, I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, I don't have anything fancy here. So I actually just set up already works real quick. And you can see I drew a square. I made this square exactly 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and do a quick cut on my rolling pin just to see where we are. So let's do that. All right, so now we got this cool little square on our uh, on my rolling pin. I'm just gonna call it a rolling pin because basically all I do is cylindrical. I guess you can do tumblers or whatever round things you might want to do, glasses or something. Uh, and we just need to, to go ahead and take a measurement with this. You're gonna need a metric, flexible. I use a flexible uh, tape measure that reads metric and standard, but you're gonna need to be able to read metric, or you're gonna have to be really good at converting it because we're gonna tie all this down pretty close enough anyway. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and measure our square here to see what the heck we're dealing with. Uh, this way should this way should be dialed in. This way is not. Sorry, sounds like a ghost out there. So we do in uh, I'm gonna do what we do in the carpentry world is I'm gonna burn a hundred millimeters, which is ten centimeters, and I'm gonna start at the 100 mark, and we're gonna measure over to here. So it should be 30 millimeters. So 13 centimeters. I'm sorry, 30 centimeters. Hmm. Ghosts. Doors are opening and closing by themselves. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and burn 100 millimeters here. Uh, so I'm actually gonna start my measurement at uh, 100 millimeters or 10 centimeters. We just need three centimeters or 30. Uh, millimeters. It's just because that's what I told it to cut. It's just any perfect square would be fine. You can do 100 by 100 millimeters, doesn't matter, as long as you get the results you're looking for on your tape measure. So, we have this dialed in at, you can see here we start at 100 and we got, uh, we're down at the 13 mark there, which would be 30. So, because we burned 100 millimeters, so we got 100, uh, 0 to 30. So, we have 30 millimeters this way. Now we're gonna go in this way. Now we're gonna go in this way. This way it gets a little tricky. It's nice to have the flexible tape. So we put it on the mark there and the mark here. And I actually have 121 millimeters minus the 100 millimeters. So I know I'm doing 21 millimeters when I need 30. So that's the problem. I'll show you how to change that in software right now. Open already works back up. 
And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to File, Vendor Settings, and you should see over here, it's, you need a password. Well, what's the password? The password is RD, and then 8888, which is four, four eights. And then it'll open you up into the perimeters here. Okay, the first thing you're gonna need to do is actually read. It's not gonna let you make any changes unless you read the machine. And then you're gonna to want to save these perimeters. Save, and then save it whatever, wherever you want, whatever you want, as long as you know what the heck it is, in case you mess up. And then up here, we'll wanna to go to the Y axis. The Z axis is what goes left to right, and the Y axis is what goes up and down, I'm sorry front to back. So we're dealing with front to back. So we'll click the Y axis and then uh, you'll see step length and then there's three dots. Uh, you should see that here. So we'll click the three dots. Then we have graph length. We want to put 30 because we did a 30 by 30 millimeter square. So we say, hey, we wanted this to be 30 millimeters, but it's only giving me 21 millimeters. So the top one would be we want 30, but it's giving me 21. And then just click OK. Now it changed the step length. You should have noticed that. It recalculated it for it, and this should fix our problem. So now we need to go to write. And this is gonna to write to the machine what we just did. And then I would go ahead and click save. And then we wanna click new rolling pin. Just so I know what it is. Okay, so now it's saved to my computer. So I have it. So let's go over to the machine and see what happened. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually run that exact same 30 millimeter by 30 millimeter again real quick. Let's run that. And now let's get our measurements. You can see here we got a better square. I'm sorry as all this in the way, but I want to use a piece of scrap because you're going to typically ruin your first product. So if uh, there is a, a trick to get around to not ruining your first product, I can show that to you in another film. But uh, for right now, this I'm throwing this away anyway, so it's going to get better results. So we got a piece of scrap. So let's go ahead and measure. We burn 100 centimeter, 100 millimeters. And we down to here, you can see we're now at 13. So we got 30 millimeters that way, which was our Y axis. And then we'll check our X axis. I'll burn 200 here. And we still have 30 there. So we're ready to do a test engraving because there's another thing that this might be giving me a mirror image and that might be something we have to deal with. So let's go ahead and do a test engraving on this thing because after all, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to set up a really small engraving and I'm going to make it uh, legible. So it should print legible on there and not a mirror image. If it prints a mirror image, then there's something we need to do. Okay, so here's what we printed. It's supposed to say footsteps in the past. Really, really nice right there, but it printed a mirror image, so this is pretty crappy. There's, you could go in and mess with a bunch of perimeters on the machine, or there's a simple thing we can do to make this work right. First thing you, you want to get your measurement, remember it. So I'm at 120, 113 millimeters. Sorry, I'm so used to doing standard. All we gotta do is rotate this 180 degrees. Easy peasy. Almost don't have enough room to do that. Okay. Go ahead and position it here. Oops, that's something I want to do. Pulse. Go ahead and get your measurement. Make sure it's right. Okay, so I got it switched around, rotated 180 degrees. Let's give it a test engraving now. There we go. 
footsteps in the past. I don't know if you're seeing a mirror image or not, but I promise you it's not a mirror image. That's exactly what we want. See, that's what we want just in case. It says footsteps in the past appropriately. And that actually says a mirror image, but for some reason in my little lens here, it shows it's a mirror image when that's actually... I'm sorry, that reads right in the camera, but it's a mirror image. <laughs> that's what we want right there. It's perfect. This thing's ready to go ahead and set up and engrave, uh, I don't know, probably another thousand rolling pins before it goes bad. All right, if you guys learned how to engrave your rolling pins today, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. Just click my bu little button there uh, with my logo on it, and you get all hooked up there. I'm Jay. This is my to-do list. Thanks for watching.